My name is Gary Baugh. I'm currently the president of the school board here in Reno Valley Unified School District. I was first elected to the board in 1998 and served until 2002. Then I was reappointed in 2014 and then ran for election, or 2013, and then ran for election and won a one-year seat. And then this last year, I ran again for a four-year seat. Uh, I was actually born in the state of Washington in Port Townsend. And, uh, but when I was in the first grade, we moved to uh, Orem, Utah, which is south of Salt Lake, about 40 miles. Grew up there, uh, attended Brigham Young University, and then went in the Air Force uh, through the ROTC program, was, became an officer in the Air Force. While in the Air Force, I uh, taught English at the Air Force Academy for six years. I was an educational administrator for much of my career. Uh, finally ended my career as a personnel director for two different Air Force bases and actually served as a deputy base commander on Guam for one year. So uh, we moved 13 times in 22 years in the Air Force, so I had a lot of experience. One of the reasons I ran for the school board was that in moving around all those times, you could never get a sense of community. And so once we lived here, we moved here in uh, 1987. Then Marino Valley kind of became our home and we have lived here ever since. There were things to be fixed and that's why I decided I would run for the school board to see if I could help make a difference. You, you never make a difference by yourself. You have to do it in collaboration with other people. And uh, there was too much disharmony on the board at that time. And now we have a very harmonious board so we can focus on the goals and objectives that will make for better education for the students of Reno Valley. A board is to ensure physical, uh, fiscal accountability to set long-term goals, to focus on things that will improve the educational process. We don't get involved with the hiring of people or the firing of people. We don't get involved with the, even, we approve the principles, but we don't, or we aren't part of the process until they, we have to give a formal approval. So people assume that because we're on the Board of Education, we can do the, administration and we don't do administration anytime I get that kind of call I listen patiently and then refer it to the superintendent for her to solve the problem our job is really to hire the superintendent and make sure that we have adequate and exemplary achievement and if we don't then we have to get a new superintendent but that's really what our job is I think the most important thing an individual board member to do is to work together with the other board members and if you don't understand something seek clarification and seek compromise as one of the reasons our country's in the shape that it is in my estimation is that Congress can't work together with people across the aisle and I think that is so important with local politics that we come together and work for a common good and if we don't agree on something that we disagree respectfully as opposed to uh, any kind of contest of I win, you lose. We, we need to win together, all five of us. And uh, really for the most part, it's been a joy to be with this particular board because we work together. And our focus is not on individual agendas. As far as I'm concerned, our focus is only on the kids and even, even when we take our other partners in this process, so the teachers union and the classified union and the management group, we all have to work together for the good of the kids. So we don't do it for the good of the union, for example. It's just what's best for children to be able to achieve their, their capability. It's always sad to me to see a young person 
who has so much potential and doesn't reach it, I believe we have an ability to help young people achieve excellence. And we have to work together to do it. If, if we get involved in individual personalities, we're not concentrating on kids. One of our big goals, besides increasing our graduation rate and reducing the uh, dropout rate, was to have more uh, people become competent in the language, to be reclassified as no, no longer an English learner, but proficient in English. Uh, that is so critical that people learn the language of the country they live in and therefore they can contribute more and they will achieve more. They can become excellent in education. And uh, it's been one of our goals to do that, to create a family environment where we care for one another and that we've made great strains, for example, to involve parents. Parents are the key to success in my estimation. If you can get the parents involved in the schools, then they are involved and they, their kids uh, see that. Uh, you know, for example, the, the programs over at some of our elementary schools to actually teach parents how to be parents and how to use the uh, technology that's available to know what their kids are doing in school, to see whether they're attending, whether they've got all their assignments in. Uh, even, we, even a reading club has been formed with some of these parents. And this reading club, one of the things they get together every week to read books, whether it's in Spanish or English, and their kids see their mothers reading, and now they read and read more. So uh, if we did not have supportive parents, it would be very difficult to make a change. But we do. We, we have vision, and that's what a school board should do, is have the vision of where, where we want to go, what we want to achieve, and be aware that it might not be this year, it might be next, but we're making progress all the time. Our goals are really five-year goals, because you can't change overnight. You can't, it's got to be slow and steady, or else it's like a flash in the pan, high one year and low the next. And we want a steady growth, and that's what we've had. We have uh, a strategic plan. And that strategic plan is not just a paper to show somebody. It is actually, it moves our budget, it moves our priorities, it gives us direction. And the strategic plan, coupled with the funding mechanism that goes along with it, Everything is programmed that this is what we want to accomplish by this date, by this year, or by next year, and we'll fund it and, and make sure that those funds are properly spent. A lot of people think that the extra bond money that we gave would be for things like salaries or benefits. None of that $400 million goes for that. That $400 million goes strictly for facilities so that every school in this district will have some improvements. We have schools that are 60 years old and are really in dire straits for the infrastructure, stuff you don't see, you know, your piping, your electricity, cables, and so forth and so on. Technology also plays an important part. We've tried to get uh, laptop computers or for all of our students Things like that cost a lot of money, but you you program it so much this year, so much next, and by the time our five-year plan is done, it'll be it'll, it'll be achieved. So I think that's why things get done well because there is a plan and it is followed, and there's there's an accountability which is really unique. Many times we get a plan and nobody ever asks us after the plan is done, but in this district. There is so much accountability, so much reporting back, and something measured is better than nothing measured. And something measured and reported on is even better. And so it is reported on and followed up. So I think that's, uh, that's a key to success, is to have follow-up for goals that are worthy goals.
You know, uh, if, if you're going to make a difference, you do it one person at a time. And the teachers who are most successful are able to identify a student and what that student needs. It doesn't matter that there's 30 or 35 kids in the class. Every student needs to feel special. And those that are at the margin, those that are struggling, need someone who really cares. And we made it a potential to make sure that we care about the kids and one by one. It, it, it's gratifying. We're going to have a graduation here at the end of this week for the summer school. 125 kids will be graduating who in times past has said, hey, the person didn't make it through high school. Maybe he'll get a GED sometime. No, we identified them. In fact, one of the keys is that we identify them early, not at 11th grade or 12th grade. You need to identify who's struggling in elementary school. We added this past year new counselors because we needed to give more attention to those young people who are struggling with all kinds of issues. So uh, focusing on the one, that's why you leave the 90 and 9 for the one. I think it was a vote of confidence in the district and they realized that we needed those monies or we wouldn't have asked for them. And we made them certain promises. For example, it's a football field at Canyon Springs High School. The only high school in town doesn't have a football stadium. That's ridiculous. Uh, improvement in, in every school, that's what we're, we promised. And we've done that. If you look and see, we're building a, a new school over at Cactus and the, the Bridge School, yeah, Indian and Cactus. You know, we, we could have left them in substandard housing, but no, we want to have excellence for those kids who are kids who've had troubles in school. That we've given them the first brand new school is kids who've had trouble in school. So uh, as we knocked on doors and talked to people, they were very supportive as long as the money went for facilities and not people. And that's what that 400 million does. And eventually that is to be matched by another 400 million by the state. We don't know when that will happen, but at least for what we can control. And what a boon to this community that we'll have infrastructure help to make this a better community with $400 million in construction. It's just tremendous. Well, I think it tells the students that we value them, that we care about them. And I want them to feel that they're as important as anybody who lives anywhere else in town. So you give them a brand new school. What a joy it is to go to a brand new school. Take Armada, for example. We're going to be improving Armada, another area that's not as well off as some areas in town they're already under construction to add on to their school a two-story uh, uh, building with all the latest technology. I think it's so important to say it's not this lip service. I care about you and so I'm going to make sure that you have the best facilities that we can possibly do because you're valuable to us. You're a human being. You've got a good potential to make a good contribution if you get the right kind of education, we want you to have that. Those parents over there, by the way, those parents are so supportive of that school. They really are. They are there volunteering, helping out. I think it would be a sad thing to ignore the parents and the students of Edgemont Elementary. When one moves to town, one always asks, where are the schools, how close am I to the schools, and are they quality schools? And if it's determined that they're quality schools, then you buy the house and move there. The same is true for a business. You know, we have almost 200,000 people in this community. 
why don't we have more businesses? Perhaps because the infrastructure wasn't as good, perhaps because the schools in the past have not been so strengthened. But now we have a reputation that we are, have, in essence, award-winning school district, award-winning schools with programs such as History Day winners for the whole nation. Stuff like that sells houses, sells businesses. So to, to me, that's why someone would want to move to Moreno Valley. I was speaking with someone the other day and they said, well, you've got a rich community over there in Moreno Valley. I said, oh, really? Why do you say that? Well, I drove up on Canyon Springs High School and over to Vista Heights Middle School, saw the beautiful houses and the churches and so forth and so on. What a great community. And I said, it is a great community. And we will continue to be a great community as long as we have good schools. There are a lot of reasons for that. One is that we have an outstanding superintendent and she is a dynamite uh, leader. Uh, we also have uh, Jesus Holguin, who's the president of the California School Board Association. And every other word out of Jesus's mouth is Mino Valley Unified. Uh, it's, been, it's been unique to serve with him because he's so knowledgeable and he also promotes the district and he shares the successes that we have had and the ideas and how we got there and he takes from them their successes and to me it's a very symbiotic relationship that only leads to improvement so I'm delighted that we've got him uh, on the school board. Well, uh, my my only experience on school boards has been this particular school board. But when I've gone to conferences and I hear the pettiness that sometimes goes on in school boards, I'm so thankful that I'm on this school board here. Uh, we have a very knowledgeable school board. Uh, you know, Pat Kelleher, for example, a former principal and administrator, added immensely to this school board when he was appointed here uh, to fill a vacancy. Uh, C.J. Johnson has a passion for young people and for sports. He's, he's very mindful of what he can do to help uh, any person. Uh, got a great heart. Uh, uh, Denise Fleming, she is a dynamo. She, she works hard. She's passionate about schools. She's passionate about the minority students and the underprivileged students. And she makes sure that we are mindful of their needs. Jesus already talked about Jesus, what a great guy he is. Uh, it, it's just a great board, and I enjoy serving on it. When we disagree, oftentimes in closed session where we have, where you can actually talk about things that are, could, could be divisive, it's interesting to me that eventually we can help another person to come to a different point of view than they held originally. And, uh, but when we're on the dais, we're very respectful of anybody who comes, whether they're throwing stones or not, because that's their opinion and they have a right to do that. But we are never condescending and we're always respectful of others. And I, I really think, I don't know that anybody has a hidden agenda, at least it's not revealed it to me. Our agenda is the, the education of these students. That's the agenda. One is, uh, we're not there as far as our graduation rate. You know, we, we want to graduate 100%. That might not be practical, but where we are currently is not where we want to be. We want to be up around 90% or more. And so what that's going to take is continued focus on our uh, strategic plan, on our funding for the things that need to be done. And that, that's what I'd like to see. I, I also want to see High School 5 built. I want to see the improvements made at Reno Valley High School 
Canyon Springs High School, uh, Mar Marino Elementary, and that's another school like Edgemont that has so much that can be done. And to me, if we, if we do that and we focus on the education of the kids, we will, will deserve a pat on the back. I don't think we're there yet. I think we still have a way to go to improve. Well, I think we will be growing. I think the housing market will come back to this community and will be growing. And uh, we'll need to be prepared for that. I also think that we need to use technology much better than we have used it in the past. We frankly, that whenever you get technology, next year there's more technology. So it, that's why you have to keep focused on what your goals are. If you're chasing something, it's like uh, you've got your foot nailed to the floor and you just go around and around and around. We don't want revolving doors. We want to have a projection forward and an and, and, and increase. So that's what I would see. We'll have more students, we'll have more demands, and we need to do better at helping those who really need it. That's what public education is all about. It is not about elitism. Public education is taking everybody to make them a better person, more productive citizen. And the values that we have are values that will make a, a life better. And that's what we want. Because education, reading, math, computers, all those things are to make our lives better and make the community better. I truly believe that.